Hey there YouTube, Joe Skies one here with another video game review. Today we are doing my favorite game of all time, Halo 3. As you can see, I got the Legendary Edition mural right here, and I think I'm blocking it, but I also have the poster that comes with the game. On the back of that there's instructions, not instructions, um, controls for like Forge and stuff. Um, anyways, this is the copy of the game I got Christmas Eve 2007. Um, it's ripped a little bit. I think it's broken somewhere. But anyways, I've had this game eight years. I've had this game as long as I've had an Xbox. I got an Xbox on my birthday, 2007. Um, and this was the one game I really wanted. And I got it, and, you know, like, my cousin came over. He had an Xbox, too. So he brought over, like, his four controllers or whatever so we could all play together. Um, I ran downstairs. I was so excited. I actually dropped it, and the disc fell out. You know, it went on the floor, and I was like, oh, shit, I broke it. But, you know, it, all was, it was all good. I played it. It was fucking amazing. Um, I just... Like, when I first started up the campaign, oh, oh my god, it was so much fun. You know? Because I played Halo 1. I played Halo 2. I played all the games before this one. There were only two, but... You know, I played them all before I got this one, and I was so excited. Because, you know, I thought Halo 2 had a good ending. Everybody else said it sucked, but, you know, it ends with this fucking cliffhanger, and it's leading right into the next one, and I was so pumped. And then, you know, I knew the third one was coming out, and I saw it, and I got it for Christmas, and it was so freaking awesome. I loved it. Um, but anyway, Halo, two, Halo 3, it has a great story. You know, basically what happens is you're on a mission to find Cortana and stop the Flood once and for all. Which you do stop, you stop the Flood in the previous two games, but in this one you actually, you know, you actually, it feels like the end. This is the last time the Flood show up in Halo games, and that's good. Um, so you actually do stop them. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the story. You find Cortana and you stop the Flood. Um, I love everything about it, but the only problem I hate is that there's only nine missions. Um, ten if you count the intro tutorial. Um, the missions are as follows. Arrival, that's, you know, the opening cutscene when you land in the forest. Um, Sierra 117. Crow's Nest. Um, after Crow's Nest, it's Savo Highway. Then the Storm, then Floodgate, the Ark, the Covenant, Cortana, and Halo. Um, you know, all of the missions are pretty, pretty fun. You know, even the shorter ones, you still have a good time playing them, and it's re it's pretty fair depending on what um what game difficulty you choose. I beat this on Legendary, and that's the only game. I have ever played where I beat it on the highest difficulty. Um, I beat it on Legendary, and it wasn't too bad, as long as, you know, you use common sense and you actually think about how the AI might work. And after dying a dozen or so times, you start to figure out their tactics, you figure out where they're going to spawn, and all that stuff. Um, so it's really not that bad if you're trying to do this. The thing that pains me the most is that I know I'm not going to be able to get 100% completion, like all the achievements, because... The only ones that I don't have are um, multiplayer ones, and the multiplayer ones that I don't have are Mythic matches. And I have all the DLCs, but nobody plays Mythic anymore, because I think the only people that are still playing Halo are um, ones who like just bought it or they got it for free with Games with Gold. Okay guys, so my camera cut out and I had to um, set it back, but anyways... Um, it's really a shame that nobody has Mythic maps or plays on Mythic anymore because it was a really great DLC. All the DLCs in Halo 3 are amazing, in fact. Um, you know, it's just extra maps, and I know what you're saying, you know, oh, big deal, but, you know, I feel that way about a lot of video games. Halo 3 is the only game that I really think, um, it's worth buying the extra maps because, um, you get more things you can use in Forge mode. 
Um, if you like using Forge Mode, you have to buy... I think it's Mythic. It's either Mythic or Legendary. Um, it comes with Sandbox, and that's exactly what it is. It's just a Sandbox. Um, you get three arenas you can work with. You can go up into the sky and look down on everything, which is the biggest, I think. Um, you can use the actual gameplay, you know, the actual uh, map, which people use when they're just, you know, playing Slayer or whatever. And you can use the Griff Ball Arena, which is below. Um, of course, to use the, uh, the actual map, you have to delete everything in the center, which is why I usually just go up and, you know, use the sky. But um, anyways, that's a great thing that you can do in this game is use Forge. Um, and in Halo Reach, they promised a sandbox Forge mode. And I played it, and it wasn't. It was just Forge Island, and there's an island with all these rocks and stuff. I expected it to be like a, f a flat area where I could build structures and shit. No, it's just a, it's an island. Whereas in Halo 3, sure, you had to pay a little extra money... But you can get something that you can actually work with, as opposed to, like, mountains and crap that you can't. Um, anyways, the Forge aspects of this game is really fun. Um, it's always fun to get back online with some of your old friends and play with them on multiplayer. This is the only multiplayer game that I'm really good at, like... It's not that I'm an amazing player, but unlike Call of Duty, this is balanced... You know, in Call of Duty, you get shot in the face by somebody with a rifle that they have that's ten times better than yours, you know. In Halo 3, the game is totally balanced. If somebody has a shotgun, you can find the shotgun and pick it up, you know. It's not like it's always going to be people who are higher ranked than you have better weapons and they're going to kill you. At least that's how it was in the old days before they added in classes and shit. Um, but... The other thing is, Call of Duty, you just get ranked, you get matched up with anybody. Whereas in Halo, it actually tries to match you with people your own skill level. So instead of getting stuck with somebody who's like 87, 5th prestige or some shit like that, you get stuck with somebody who's closer to your skill level, so it's a fairly matched game. Um, and that's one of the great things about this multiplayer. Um, this is the first thing, this is the first video game that I ever saw people doing machinima with and you know I, I watched all the classic ones like red versus blue um bumper cars all the all the what's his name i forget it's like manslayer all the classic manslayer ones you know um there were a lot of great ones rooster teeth definitely was one of the best um yeah puppy in halo 3 that's another good one but anyways, yeah, that's that's one good thing. It's not only um, can't, not only does this allow for machinima making with Forge mode and custom games, but you can also view your movies in the theater, so you don't have to get like a capture card or anything. You can just upload it to like Bungie.net, and then well, you used to be able to do that. You can upload it to Bungie.net and then download it on your computer and just edit it right there, you know. And that's another great thing. Um, Bungie.net, that was... They just use it for Destiny now, but back in the day when you played Halo and Halo Reach and all those games, you know, you could go on, go to your profile and see, okay, I'm, you know, I'm the best with this weapon. I have more kills with a battle rifle than I do with a shotgun. You know, you could view all that stuff. You could look at statistics of your game. It was kind of like bragging rights, but it was really fun. Um, you got pride to look at how well you did in a game. Um... But yeah, that's, you know, that's the way it works. Right here, I have the Legendary Edition Helmet. This game also comes with, um, actually, let me grab it. The Legendary Edition comes with the helmet. And, oh god, oh god. And a strategy guide. Now, this is like a walkthrough, but it also gives you tips in multiplayer and in the game for completing on Legendary. As well as tips on how to get the achievements, um, because, you know, some of them you have to get a certain score on a level, and this tells you what the best skulls to use and all that stuff. So that's a really useful um, thing. Legendary, I think, was like 100 150 bucks, but it's well worth it because you get a lot of good stuff. 
You get the helmet, um, which comes with the cover. It's over there. It's got a stand. Kind of dusty, but that's because it's been sitting on my desk for a while. Um, you also get a copy of Halo 3, and it's black. It's really cool. These are unique. Um, they're all black and darkened out. And then Halo Essentials, which is, it shows you the, um, like, th what they did to make the game. It's pretty much like behind the scenes. Um, with this, you get the manual, Halo 3, but I think it's different than all the other ones. Um, and you also get Halo Essentials, a storyboard. It's got two discs, it's like a movie. But you get a storyboard, you know, um... So as you can see, this is the beginning when he lands in Sierra 117, you know. This is him in Crow's Nest. It's really fun. Um, my favorite mission is the Covenant. Um, you get to fly a hornet. It's got great music in the background. It's really fun. But, um, anyway, that's my favorite game of all time. Highly highly recommend you pick it up even if you have a ps3 like buy a 360 for like a hundred bucks and buy a copy of this game because it is the most fun i've ever had in any game in my life um i have more memories with this game than i have anything else in the world now, i'm not talking about games i'm talking about more memories with this than i have anything um it's a really fun game pick it up if you have an Xbox 360 and you've never played this game, what the fuck are you doing, okay? This is... Having an Xbox 360 and not playing Halo 3 is like eating a burger without fries. It just doesn't make sense. It's not complete. The game is not... Com the, your Xbox is not complete without a copy of Halo 3. And, you know, I know people are like, oh, Reach is better. No, I mean, I don't care. That's fine. That's your opinion. But you still have to play Halo 3 because... Your life will never be the same after you play it. It's one of the greatest, my favorite game. I still think it's one of the greatest. Um, but anyway, if you have an Xbox One, you can always pick up the Master Chief Collection, which is a great deal because you get four games for the price of one. And they're all pretty good. Even Halo 4 is a pretty good game. I mean, obviously it's not as good as any of the other ones, but I still liked it. Um, but anyways, yeah, pick up Halo 3, play it. And then, you know, comment on this video. Tell me how you feel about it. Um, anyways, new video coming out tomorrow. Zombie video. Um, I think I said in a previous video I was going to do a movie review, but I'm not because I'm lazy. Um, anyways, yeah, like this video. Share it with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel. Please comment. Um, that's the thing I want from you the most. Please comment on the video. And tell me if you've played Halo, what your memories of the game are. Um, if you pick it up and play it after I tell you to do that, then tell me about your experience. What do you thought of the game? But anyways, um, until next time, this is Joe's Guides 1 saying, Don't fear the apocalypse, welcome it.